Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm going to talk to you today about answering medical questions over the phone. So um, in um, the current times of veterinary medicine, clients are very used to um, virtual medicine and, and telemedicine and having options of calling their own doctors on the phone. So when their companion animals get sick, um, they often look for those same options um, for themselves. So. Um, you know, one of the important things to keep in mind is that we have to balance what is a really customer friendly approach um, and balance that with what um, we medically need to do and what our risks of liability are. And so if you have a client calling in that is an existing client that you know they were just discharged and they have questions it may be reasonable to offer some guidance on the phone but it can change pretty significantly if you haven't seen that pet before and we actually um, in emergency and specialty medicine we see new clients all the time and they may not have um, a recent exam that establishes the veterinary um, client relationship that allows us to give recommendations over the phone. We also have to keep in mind that the individual answering the phone may have a very degree of education or an experience themselves. And I'm a pretty firm believer that receptionists should not be answering medical questions over the phone. And the reason I feel that is because um, misstepping, giving misdirections over the phone can actually come with pretty significant risk to the patients. Um, we don't have control over what clients say and what they perceive as the biggest concern may not often match what we would find as the biggest concern if we were actually having hands on the patients and doing a physical exam. Um, so what I would advise you is to be pretty um, careful about saying things um, really definitively. I like to leave decisions up to the clients if I'm not seeing the pet. Um, and um, I ask follow-up questions that help us get to kind of the heart of what is going on with the pet. So um, often when you first talk to the, the client, they may be really distressed and um, going on about um, what is currently a problem and what's been a problem for the past um, you know, lifetime of the pet and you have to sift through that and find out what the pertinent information is. And one of the most useful tools that I feel like we have is, is repeating back information. So if after the client tells me what their concerns are, I, I very often will say, okay, what I'm hearing you say is that Murphy hasn't eaten in three days and um, is having diarrhea. And very often I find myself saying, if you're concerned, I'm concerned too. And the best option is to have them evaluated by a veterinarian so we really know what's going on. Um, that's often a message that's on our phone recordings, human health care. Um, for the longest time, any of your doctors you can call and the, the first thing you hear is, if you're having a medical emergency, please hang up and call 911. And we should have a similar approach. Um, we don't have them call 911, but if you are having a medical emergency, if your pet is not responding to, if they are breathing abnormally, you need to hang up the phone and come in to our clinic or the one that's closest to you. Um, so make sure you're repeating back information that you are asking them to make the decisions. So um, if they're on the fence about coming in or not, you may want to say, I recommend that you have your pet seen, but ultimately it is up to you and these are the things you can watch for. Things that I would be really careful about saying are um, your pet sounds fine, your pet will be fine, um, they're stable. We can't know those things just through a conversation. It really requires um, at least a physical exam with uh, medical staff, um, with having hands on the pet, if not even more um, things like diagnostics that help us know what's going on. Um, but I think the most important thing is, is to keep in mind that overstepping in those conversations doesn't actually help the pet. The way we help animals is by having them seen. So do the best you can to help clients through tricky situations, but be careful about overstepping and inadvertently reassuring them when there may be something going on. And that's the basics of handling medical questions over the phone. And um, it can be really specific to the situation on hand, but we're gonna do a short demonstration to give you some tips on how to practice 
um, both not misdirecting clients and repeating back the information you're hearing to get details that are going to help you make the right decisions for the pets in need.